You want her to go? Okay. That's all right. Amen. Yes. Amen. All right. Do you have a testimony? Praise the Lord. Yes. I tell you, she always knows, she lives in Louisiana, but she always knows who to call when she needs prayer. And we answer the call, just like everybody else who calls you. You answer the call to pray for. Even if they don't come to our church, God still answers our prayers. It is so good to hear the news. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, I tell you, God's God's able. I was mowing a yard. I lived in Georgia, and I was mowing this yard, and, and I mowed the grass down, and the, all these little things came and swirling out. They were rattlesnakes. Oh yeah, you all seen my mower work? <laughs> <laughs> I got them all. <laughs> so my my snake beats your bees. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still God's the good, yeah, because if it, if it bit me, that'd been bad. If it stung you, you'd just had a little sting. But anyway, it was good. God's good. Oh, my goodness, yeah. I lost like three years of my life. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still just catching up. Let's stand if you will. Anybody else got anything to say? All right. Okay. 
Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that we heard because we know that you are a God who answers prayers. And we thank you, Lord, for the protection that you give us. Even though, Lord, we act in silliness and do stupid things, Lord, your hand is still upon us. I thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and ask for the ones who need healing, for the ones who need uplift and who need to be encouraged. We ask, Lord, that wherever these people are, whether they're here or whether they're at home or wherever, I pray, God, if they are a part of this church, I pray, God, that you would just go and encourage them and, and lift them up. I ask, Lord, that you would bless thou, Lord, that you would cause her to be a, a blessing to this young lady. And, Lord, that, she, that you would let the Holy Spirit work through thou to this one, that she would have the testimony of how she, this one has come and accepted you because that is what we are working for. I thank you, Lord, for the word today, and I just ask that you would just have your way. I ask that you would anoint me, and, Lord, that I will say the words that you would have us to say, and that we could all say when we leave that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. For we ask these things in your name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right, this is kind of a, well, you'll just have to figure it out. I was doing this, and people who teach or preach, they always have a title. And as you know, I have no title. It just comes out. And this is what it is. I just want you to know that when I have asked the Lord to give me a, a message, I start praying on a Monday, and I just sat down and I said, Lord, just show me where to read and give me a message. And I am telling you, he gave me a message. Now, whether I can give it to you or not, <laughs> I don't know. So we're going to go to Second Chronicles. And right now, I just can barely, barely do it. Second Chronicles chapter 5. And... As I was studying this, it brought back to my memories as we talked about the temple. In chapter 5 of Second Chronicles, it says this, the very first verse. Thus all, let me get this right here because I want to read all the scriptures here. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. Solomon was chosen by God to build the temple. David wanted to, but because David had shed so much blood, God said no, even though that David was a man after his own heart. But he let Solomon do it. And then it's finished. Then it goes on and says, As Solomon brought it in all the things that David his father had dedicated and the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. As I was reading this, we think of a temple. It says that he had finished, but what was missing was it was empty. It was a temple, but it had nothing in it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, everybody knows what it says. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Lord. When Jesus, when God chose Jesus, when he sent him, on the cross, he said, it is finished. We are his temple, but at that time, before we know the Lord, we are an empty temple. We have nothing to glorify until God begins to put the instruments and the, the uh, furnishings in us through the Holy Spirit. In John, Jesus said, in, in John 17, God is, Jesus is praying to the Lord, and he said, I have finished my work. And then he dies on the cross, and he says, it is finished. 
the instruments that he gave. Let's go to verse 2. Can somebody read this in, my, in the Bible so everybody can hear? Okay, read it. Take 2, verse 2. Okay, the beginning of our salvation, when Jesus said it is finished, when he died on the cross. When David, or when Solomon finished the, the temple, God said, go get the furnishings, go get the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represents God. Well, whoever had the Ark of the Covenant had the blessing of God. Whoever has the Lord in you, in your temple, has the blessing of God. Then he goes on, verse, go to, read to five, but we're, that all goes together. Okay, you must see that the Ark of the Covenant was the most important piece of the temple. But in the temple, there were many other pieces that in order for the priest to go into the holies of holies, had to do. First of all, they had to clean themselves up. They had to, they had to do the altar of the sacrifice, and then they had to go to the, the mercy seat. And all of this was before they went in to see God. What we need is our holy vessels. In verse 5, it says, in, in the King James, it says, he gave a holy vessel. Well, Jesus was the holy vessel because when we approach God, there is only one way that we approach God, and how is that? Through Jesus, uh, through God, Jesus, in Jesus is how we get to God. Whatsoever you ask in my name, you shall receive. No one comes unto the Father except by me. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the holy vessel. We're the temple, but he's the holy vessel that lives in us. He is the one who allows us to meet God. He has allowed us to tell God what we need. The Ark of the Covenant represents God. The Lord, Jesus, represents God. God sent his beloved son to die for us. Then Jesus takes over and he does what he's supposed to do. And when he has done all he could do, he says, it's done. It's all finished. I can't do any more. So Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Verse 6 and 7, if you would. 6 and 7. Okay, they came, Solomon and all the other priests and all the other people, and they came and they presented a sacrifice. Many sacrifices for many people. But we needed one sacrifice for many people. Can you see the, 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 the things that come together, that's the temple and our lives today? When I read that, I said, Lord, how much we don't know. We know, but we don't consider. We don't talk about the things in the Old Testament because that's in the past. That's history. But history causes us to realize what's happening today. And because they brought many sacrifices, Jesus or God said, listen, this is my beloved son. 
This is my beloved son. He is the sacrifice for you. I am giving you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The sacrifice. And they were doing that. They took many sacrifices. They took lamb, rams, and sheep, and, and, and pigeons, and everything. They had all kinds of sacrifices, but we only needed one. We only needed one. But all of this was provided in the temple. And if we are the temple of God, we should realize what we have and who we are. Solomon finished the temple. Jesus finished it for us. He caused us to be where we are today. The instruments that or, and the furnishings in the temple that everybody used in order, every priest that was going in to meet the Lord or meet God at the Ark of the Covenant, they had to go to these different things. Everything that was in the temple was used. Everything that God gives us to be what we are supposed to be is given to us through the Word. Basically, through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. That's what God gave to us. Jesus said, I must go away. If I don't go away, the Holy Spirit can't come. He has given us the Holy Spirit. As God had given them the furnishings in order to prepare themselves in order to make and approach the holies of holies. But only one could go in the holies of holies. And that was the high priest. But when Jesus died on the cross, what happened? The veil was torn. From top to bottom. And it wasn't a little piece of string. It was a big, thick piece of something. I don't know what. But it, people could not even lift it. They couldn't pull it apart. And in my studies, and I didn't know this, but in my studies it said it took four yokes of oxen just to pull it apart. And Jesus did it. God did it when Jesus said, It is finished. We're the temple of God. He lives within us. He has given us the power to say it's finished. But it's not finished for us because our, our temple are still being molded, still being shaped because we have not seen God. We have not came to, we approach him, we talk to him, but we have never been with him. And only the holies of, uh, only the high peace could go in at the covenant. Listen, when we die, that's when we will see God. But our temple has to stay clean. It has to live the right way. It has to be given off in a certain way. Verse, verse 7, uh, 8 and 9, if you would, please. Okay, well, we're going to go back to verse 7 because there's a thing in there that says, and the, priestly, and the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place. His place, not the place, his place. Does he have a place in your temple? He was put into his place. It was a box that contained the Lord. It represented God. But that place belonged to him. Does he have a place in your temple? And then it goes on and it says, to the oracles of the house. Let me tell you, Solomon told them where to put the furnishings. But if you go back and read in Exodus, you will see that God told Moses, where to put them in the tabernacle. 
He had a certain place for each one. When we use the Holy Spirit, it's the gifts of the Spirit for every need that we have. Every need. He has given us the furnishings to make our temple holy. But it's up to us to do it. Verse 8 says, Then the cherubims spread their wings over the place of the ark. The cherubims, we think they're, they're angels, and they're angel-like creatures who spread their, their hand over the ark for protection. Do you know that God, and, and, and Darla just told how God had protected her. Do you know that your, his hand of protection is on us every day? All the time. All the time. I was going home there. I crossed that bridge on Eisenhower Road. And one he comes down the hill and the other comes up around the curb. And then you have the, the, the Eisenhower Road goes and crosses the bridge and turns to the left. And I was behind the car. And as they come down this winding road, there came this car. And I thought of this when you said he, he was flying down. And he was supposed to stop at the hill and let the people come around. But he did not stop. And when that car went... That car was right there, and if he had not stopped, it would have been a terrible mess. I said, thank you, Lord. Was he protecting me? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. He was protecting that man in that first car. He knows what's going to happen to us. And he's our protector, just like the cherubims was this, who protected the, the Ark of the Covenant. And then it goes on, and it says, Cover the ark and the staves there of above. And they drew out the staves of the ark, which means that ark was going to stay where it was put. You all know that the, the ark traveled with with the Israelites on these big posts. Nobody touched the ark. He wasn't supposed to touch the ark, but they had these big staves, these big posts, and they brought it into the, the temple, and it stayed. They removed the staves, and you could not see the ark unless you was right in front of it. Let me tell you, as you were saying that you was testifying to this lady, don't you know that the ark that they see is our life. That's what they see. We live a Christian life. And Jesus said in Hebrews, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When they brought the ark into the temple, it was to stay. It was not to go anywhere else. It was supposed to stay. When Jesus comes into our life and he changes our life, he says, listen, I am going to be with you wherever you go. That means if you come to church or if you go to a tavern, it does not matter. He is with you. He never takes his hand off, off of you. He does not leave you. But many of us, including me, have left him. That when we leave him, our temple becomes desolate. It becomes empty. And what we need to know is that we need to keep the Lord in our temple. And we need God to guide us and direct us through the Holy Spirit. Those are our instruments. Those are our furnishes that helps us, just like everyone in the temple, just like every furnish in the temple that they had to apply, that they had to go use. We have to use every word in this Bible in order for us to make it and to keep our temple clean. Now, I don't know if you, I don't know if you're getting this or not. But I'm telling you, when I read this, I could not hardly stand still. What God did for me, I was no great sinner, but that didn't matter. I wasn't going to make it to heaven anyway. Because sin is sin. And when they brought the ark into the, the temple and put it down, removed the staves, and said, there it stays. The only difference is that we can approach God. Every day, 
Whenever we need it, wherever we're at, whatever we're doing, we can approach God because Jesus said, it is finished. And because of that, we have the privilege to serve God. Because know ye not that you are the temple. We are the temple. We are not just a believer. We are not just one who comes to church. We are the temple, people. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I cannot hardly stand still. Now, we're not going to read 13, 11, 12, and 13, because unless you want to read them, it's got all those words in there. That were, they, they played the instruments. Dan, please. They played the instruments, and they, and they sang the songs, and they praised God. But after they gave the, the sacrifice, what I want to tell you this sacrifice is necessary it was necessary for God to send his son for us sacrifice is necessary but we don't praise the sacrifice we praise God for what he did with the sacrifice and what he did with the sacrifice he made us a temple where God can live so when they played their harps and their cymbals and everything that's what they played and then uh, and then it says, maybe if I can find it here. Then, verse 10, there was nothing in the ark save the two tablets which Moses put there in Herb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel. Let me tell you, when he made that covenant with Israel, when he gave Moses the Ten Commandments, and Moses went and met the Lord, and he said, these are my Ten Commandments, and if you tell them to the people and they be my people, I will be their God. And Moses went and told the people, and they said, oh, yes, we will be obedient to God. And then you know what happens. You know that's what happens to us. That's what happens to me. Yes, I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. But then something happened. Then something happened. And I wasn't the temple that God wanted me to be. I wasn't singing his songs. I wasn't praising him. Praising him, I'm telling you. I am not going to tell you. We stand up here and we say, raise your hands. And everybody raises your hands. I am not going to tell you to praise the Lord. Then, if you would, I am not going to tell you how to praise God. That is between you and God. You're your temple. And you either want God in your temple or you don't want God in your temple. You want to praise God for what he's done for your temple or you don't want to. It is not up to me to tell you how to do it. You should already know. But if you don't, then you need to learn. Because it says... There was nothing in the ark but the two tablets. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I'm going to tell you, back then in the temple was the law. Today we're the temple and it's grace. And so it is up to us to either receive or not receive. It is up to do or not to do I am not going to tell you what to do because it is verse 11 or uh, yeah 11 take that go ahead and play something spiritual something praising if you would Dan what does it say you sanctified yourself Verse 14, and this is the crutch of the whole thing I've told you. Verse 14, read it in yours. When they began to praise God, glory came down. Glory came down. Jesus came down. When we praise God, the presence of the Lord comes down. Do you not want that? Do you not want that? I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I am not going to tell you how to praise God. I just want you to do it. 
I just want you to do it. Let me tell you, when I read that, the Holy Spirit came over me. I spoke in tongues. I am telling you, we don't know what God relies upon. We don't know it. We do. We do not recognize it. We do it when people say, praise the Lord. No, you praise the Lord. When he does for, for you, you praise the Lord. You get the glory in your, in your temple, not in my temple. I get the glory in my temple. When I praise God, I get the glory. I give God the glory, and he gives me the blessing. People, I want you to sing. Sing it, Dan. I want you to get prepared to go into the next service. I'm, I want you to prepare your temple because you're going to be introduced to God today in, by the word. How are you going to receive it? How are you going to receive it? Are you going to have it so bad, so thick, that he's not going to be able to minister? How are you going to re- How are you going to receive it? I am going to tell you to stand. I'm going to ask Dan to start singing. And I, I want just you. Came to you praise God if you want to praise God. If you want to just sit there, then you just sit there. If you want God to touch your temple, then you do it. I'm not telling you how to do it. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we just come in our hearts. I want you in my temple, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh! 
I'm sure it's about time for the end. I don't know. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Holy Ghost power. Breathe on me. Yesterday's gone. And tomorrow in me. Holy Ghost.